this beauty. What do we got here? This is an old school Pioneer P41, 66cc of Rip Snorton Power. So I picked this up and we're gonna see if we can clean it up and make it into a solid, good working saw. I also am looking at cutting some uh, slabs of the chainsaw, portable chainsaw mill. I need something with a little more power. So we're gonna see if this can do the trick. So let's take a close look at this. Look how dirty this thing is. It's gonna need a nice clean, that's for sure missing the uh, brake so we're gonna see if we can fix that i don't have the part but we'll see if we can make something for that b41h the date is the 80s so it's 1980s so it's 40 years old right now anyways let's uh see if we can get this thing at least making a little noise pull the choke throttle on i'm not very hopeful but you never know look at this needs a new rope the rope's falling apart Let's uh, take out the spark plug, put a little gas in, and maybe we'll take a quick peek for spark. Woo! This doesn't look good at all. That is a very white spark plug. So it's been running very lean. It has no gas on it, so that makes me think the carb's not working right. All right go ahead. All right, we're getting spark. All right, we dribbled a little down there. Whoever had this set, it looked awfully lean. You don't want white plug like that. All right, let's see if it'll start now. Ooh. Okay, she works. That's exciting. Next, I'm just going to do a compression test just to see what condition this is in. Basically, you pull it till the compression doesn't go any higher. All right, see, it's going up a little bit. We are at, whew, I'd say oh, just below 130, so 125. Next, I just want to take a quick peek at the condition of the piston, so let's take this uh, muffler off. Trying to see how baffled this thing is if we want to open it up at some point. Anyways, let's take a look here at the piston. We'll get you guys at a good angle so you can see it as well. Ooh, it's got a lot of carbon on it, but you know what? I don't see any scoring, just a bit of carbon on it. So you can see that just is carbon on the surface. I'm surprised you get that on there. Let's see if a quick uh, carb clean can fix this up or if it needs full carb kit. As you can see, Matthew's hot in the workbench. He's working on a little pooling he's got there. So I am, um, I have the, uh, the tool bench. Interesting filter system here. Take a cloth with a seal. I think I gotta take off this little thing here. There we go. And now I think this will just come off. There we go. Ooh, that's easy. When you're messing with fuel lines, always just try to, instead of just yanking it off, you're gonna tear it. Just kind of grab it and give it a little twist. And that will basically loosen it up to pull it off. Hear that? It's like Krusty the Clown. Probably can't pump it even if it wanted to. All right, we cleaned the carb. The diaphragm is very crusty, so we're gonna have to get a new one. The little plunger was stuck or very sticky. So we cleaned that. Now that's sliding better. So it has a chance to run now. I'm gonna do that real quick. So that's it for now. I'm gonna get a carb kit and then we will uh, go from there. All right, we're back on this saw and I got a carb kit. So let's install the carb kit and see if we can't get this thing running before we tear it all into it and clean it up and make it look a little nicer. Put a link to it in the description. This is a, a fly pig carburetor reel re rebuild kit. Most places I was looking, it's 30, 40 bucks. And I think I snagged this for like $10, including shipping. So I'm pleased about that. So, so here's the old diaphragm. It's kind of crunchy and stiff. Let's uh, compare it to the new one. See, that's definitely more soft. Oh yeah, huge difference. And it looks like it's right, so that's nice. Okay, so after a little bit of Googling, um, good old Don, the small engine doctor, I think, 
he basically generally doesn't replace the Welsh plugs unless they're rusty or something. So these look fine. So I'm not going to mess around with that. There's our new gasket and then our new diaphragm. Ethanol kills the rubber and plastic parts in these. So try to get non-ethanol gas. Let's take a look at the other side. Check a look at this gasket. We can swap it out. There we go. Now this goes on here. Okay. I need a third hand here. This can go on here. This we can take out. There we go. We'll do the fuel line after. Okay, I'm a little bit leery about this because I did get sputtering, but then it started flooding. It was just giving me grief after grief. So I just thought, okay, it's the carb. Let's rebuild the carb kit. But what if it isn't? I don't know. Let's go choke. Let's turn it on. Pull the throttle open. Amazing! I flicked it on. I had pulled it two or three times just to prime it. I put the choke on, and she fired right up. Wow! Do you hear what Buckingham said? Um, for those uh, saws, don't put choke on. Okay. Like for the first two pulls, just to make sure. Because he said there's enough fuel in the curb to get it started, or else you'll flood it. So then he said if it doesn't start right then, then he said he'd do the choke. Okay, I'm sucking like crazy. I'm not getting any gas. Okay, I've done this before. Let me make sure I do have gas in here. What? This seems to be my recurring problem is trying to start chainsaws without gas. Look at that, eh? That's interesting. So it's been sitting in dirty gas, but you know what? It's fine. Like this doesn't, it doesn't feel bad. So maybe I'm not going to mess around with replacing this. I'm not looking for extra work. So I bought this kit some years ago. It's like you, you need one of these a year and now I need one and I'm going to be able to get the right size. You can kind of see it's, it's rubber and it's getting old. There we go. There's the same size. Pop it on here and we are good to go. play with the jets later but I think she's a runner let's just try start it just like this oh nice help if I turn it on you can see full throttle already we start bogging I think it's a little bit lean so let's just turn this out a quarter turn and see if that helps she's a beast next steps are going to be giving it a real good clean over taking it apart something with this muffler maybe taking out the baffle i know buck and billy has some pretty wild things on these you look at this we're going to take this off it's missing some screws it's got like stacks of washers behind you're very much pressure. Let's try this thing. That's better. Take off the uh, cover here. 
these screws have like four washers on them. I'm sure that's not stock. Um, but let's move to the other table and then you guys can see what's, what's happening better. You can see I'm missing a screw here in the handle. Those are all little things that I'll just go to the local hardware store and find suitable replacements. But when I'm taking this one out, it does not feel happy coming out. <laughs> switch here and which is grounded back over here so now you see all the extra dirt on some of these pieces Ooh, look at that I need some major cleaning Ooh, I bet you this has never been off since factory let's see if we can't get that Oh, this is a tough old bird. There we go. Here's these rubber mounts. Let's take the muffler off. Now these are fairly restricted, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing apart and see if we can't open it up a little bit. All right, time to Google. All right, it's just noisy trains going by, but I'm, it, it does say that way, so. Nope, try again. Nope. All right, let's work on this at a different angle. That moved it. Mm -hmm. This is like awfully tough. I look at the thread. Let me just make sure I'm going the right way. So this is not the typical one. So for a Pioneer P41, it actually is counterclockwise. There we go. There goes the clutch. Just gonna do a little cleanup. So let's take this apart a little further and see what we're dealing with here. So it's got the oil pump there. I didn't check the oiling, and that's one thing I should do. Let's just check the oiling on it. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, wow. This really mangled up that thing. Look at that. Let's take off the coil here. Oh. This should come off. Yeah, see now I can really get in here and clean up all the dirt and the uh, fins there. All right, that's off. From this place, this can come off here. There we go. Now, let's see if we can really take this puppy off or not. I'm hitting it very hard. We got nothing. Ah, right in my face. It's a few weeks later, or at least one week later, and I have a bit of time to get back working on this saw. We're at the point where we're just gonna give it a real good final cleanup. Looks a little gummed up. We'll keep the piston up so the dirt doesn't go in as much as possible. Now, these older saws probably run from the factory 32 or 24 to one. And with the older oils, that's definitely gonna be a contributing factor. Let's get in here with a bit of gas.
That works a lot better. I'm just going to flip this spring over here. like a dentist here. Someone scribed in 037 AFM. Anybody have a clue what that means? I don't mind getting a nice new sticker for this. Looking for a P41 sticker, folks. So here's the last two parts with the old rope. We're gonna get a new rope. And while we're here, we're going to fix this crack here. We're just going to melt that back together. Okay, now this side.
doesn't look pretty, but it does the trick. Now look, it's solid, it's one piece. Let's give these two parts a quick clean. Okay, so here are spring. This hooks on here. This hooks on, is there a hook on there? Where's the hook on? See, like that, right? Does I'm not sure where this- Does this snap off? What? Oh. Oh dear. Do you think you could take a little piece and uh, solder it on? No, I think we're gonna have to drill and put a little bolt in there. So now we have a threaded hole. Just gonna mix this up a little bit. All right, that'll do. There we go. It's about as tight as we want to go. Let's get our rope wound up. That's two and a half to three turns on here. That's one turn, two turns, and almost three turns. And look, my sleeve fell out. All right, let's undo this all. Okay. This is frustrating. Lovely. Start just wrapping this thing right inside here and just go around and around. There we go. We got that in there. Hold it all together. I think I got it now. One, two, and we'll grab this, and that's all being held now. New rope, plenty long, we are good. I think we'll just cut them up, cut them back. Here. I'm guessing that holds the two wires. There you go, see the gas line comes out there. There we go. Listen, I got Lovely. So to fasten this on, I need to get a couple screws from the hardware store. So we're gonna work on that next week. So let's work on cleaning up this puppy. Looking a little more like a saw. I really got to work on my work environment. It's a bit of a mess. And that's going to be a future project. This is a ceiling point 
and a rubber gasket on this, and you can just kind of see there's a bit of layer of gunk on that. So if we can get that off, it'll just seal that much better. Hey, this is nice and clean. Oh, oh, my neck. oh, oh yeah? I almost feel like Christian and Cobra's progress. Why? Carrying That's right. Bigger than myself. Not heavy, but bigger. Bulk. Yeah. All right, let's first do this side. Are you going to put the muscle on this? Well, yeah, I think I will. Can't not do it, right? It's gonna make it a real rip and roll. And... Let's clean the airbox. All right, we've been working on this chainsaw quite a bit and we think we have it back together enough just to make sure she's still running. We don't even have the muffler on, so it'll be noisy, but let's see if we can get it going. Matt's gonna do the honors today. Are you on? The switch is on? Yeah. Want me to try? Choke, you pull out for choke. Yeah. Extra cleaning is this cover. Now, as you see, this one has a chainsaw break, but I have an issue with this. The actual handle is snapped and the band is snapped. I can't find these parts anywhere. So for this one, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take this all off. This actually model of chainsaw had two different versions. One was with the brake and one was without the brake. So this is gonna become one without the brake. A lot of the older chainsaws didn't have chain brakes. So you just gotta be, you know, be smart how you use it. And as Billy would say, know your tip which basically means know where the tip of your bar is and what's going to happen as you move, move it around. Learn how to use your tip! screws for this. So I went to the Home Depot and found the same size thread ones. All right, to get this on now, it looks like I have to take this thing off. All right, there we go. All right, so we got these machine screws here. Not tons of compression. Next, let's work on this side. All 
All right, let's put this uh, thing back on. Did I clean that? Yeah, that's fine. Let's not overdo it here, folks. 20. Mm, 15. 11 plus 4. What's 10 plus 5? It has this little hole that goes right through. So to me, that would 15. be like... Yes. So it has these little holes, which doesn't really make sense. Maybe they're just a stock part and it's used for other... Like normally you'd put like a piece of wire there just to hold it from the loosening. But... Okay, now we're on to the bar. So the stock bar is an odd size, 22 inch, which means there's no chains I can find that size. So I could make one, that's the one option. The other option is I have this nice, a little bit longer, it's a 24 inch bar. So I'm gonna make this bar work. We're just gonna chamfer that just a little wider, see if that doesn't work for us. I got this bolt, it's the same size. So this will be my guide. gonna take a while okay so I got this smaller half worn out grinding wheel which will fit in there and help me get most of it well oh, might be enough might not be enough That seems a lot better. It's nice of that, just clean it up a little. That's good. Dab of bearing grease. There we go. I just wanna make sure the tain tain chain tensioner will line up. Lovely. Now I've got to look at the oiling situation. It's 11 sixteenths, right to the middle of that. 11 sixteenths is, it's right at the bottom of this hole. Same thing on this side. There we go. Now the other side.
I think this saw uh, we're gonna do some milling but before we do that we're gonna do a muffler mod so we'll do a test before and after and see what kind of difference it makes just to see if it really makes a difference I'm gonna do a couple cuts now stock and then we'll mod the muffler tune it and then see if it does any better get an idea how restricted some of these are. Exhaust comes in here, hits this middle baffle, it's got to go through that little triangle and that's got to go back and then it comes through here. So my first inkling is to just take out this baffle and a lot of this is for noise. Some of it's for, I don't know if you really need back, back pressure. So you have these spacers, which need to go in the middle of this puppy. There we go. Snap back together. We've got a nice free flowing muffler. It's gonna have a little more of a crackle snap pop to it. All right, so the muffler mod is fired up. Right, it's a little product, our Pioneer P41. Let's do a little bit of cutting before we pack it away for some real work in the future. Thank you. 